Two months ago, after Yang Keiwei's death, Pan Yu turned completely white-haired overnight and returned to the Pan Mansion to interrogate his father demanding to know what he knew. His father asked him, why is your hair white? He replied, because Yang Keiwei died. His father said, this is the result I've always feared. Do you now understand why I didn't let you contact her? Angered, he demanded of his father, what do you know exactly? His father told him that ten years ago, when Yang's father was still an official, I was his deputy. One day, Yang's father received a letter of denunciation, reporting a hidden rebellion within the court, with clues pointing directly to Yang. So Yang's father went to Yang to investigate secretly, but upon returning to the capital, he was falsely accused and exiled. After I took over as the official, I pretended not to know about this matter, and I never allowed you to search for Yang Keiwei either. In the end, if you hadn't found Yang Keiwei, she wouldn't have died. It's because of you that Yang Keiwei died, leaving Pan Yu in extreme grief. Pan Yu took a small boat to the life and death square. The spy following him reported to his master, Pan Yu has found Li Lang and is now heading to the life and death square. The master said, a young calf is not afraid of the tiger. Let him leave his life in Yang just like Yang Jian did ten years ago. The spy responded, yes, I will go now. The master added, wait, Pan Yu's identity is special. Since he's gone to the life and death square, why not use this opportunity to borrow their hands? The spy replied, understood. Pan Yu went alone to the life and death square. Inside, he carefully observed the surroundings and noticed that there were separate areas, an outer area where people gambled with cash, and an inner area where players could exchange for chips. While contemplating how to enter the inner area, he suddenly discovered that Yang Keiwei was already there. Pan Yu approached her, urging her to leave as soon as possible, explaining that even he couldn't protect her if something happened. However, Yang Keiwei insisted on sticking with Pan Yu, refusing to leave his side no matter what. Pan Yu and Yang Keiwei took a man and a woman hostage, exchanging clothes with them to disguise themselves and prepare to enter the inner area. Yang Keiwei handed over Mrs. Chen's name card, and the two of them successfully gained entry. Inside, they found the place where they could exchange for chips. Pan Yu asked the attendant who was guiding them, when can we exchange for chips? The attendant replied, after this round of gambling ends, there will be 30 minutes available for chip exchange. Please wait and enjoy some tea. The attendant instructed Pan Yu to attend to the lady well, so he reluctantly got up to give her a massage. Yang Keiwei, disguised as Mrs. Chen, sat sipping her tea and remarked, I really don't want to come to a place like this more than once. Soon, drums were sounded, and six beautiful women entered the stage. This round of competition was to see who would win against the wolf. Yang Keiwei clenched her teeth and cursed under her breath, while below the stage, a ferocious wolf had already been released. Yang Keiwei, for some unknown reason, began to feel a rising heat throughout her body, becoming as agitated and feverish as the others in the venue. Pan Yu noticed her unusual state and quickly reminded her of their purpose for being there. Yang Keiwei attempted to exchange her half-chip but was refused. She argued, a half-chip is still a chip. Refusing to exchange it is nothing but bullying. When you won my money earlier, did you complain that half a tail of silver wasn't real silver? Pan Yu also blended into the crowd, echoing her words and encouraging everyone to join in the uproar, shouting, that's right, that's right. In order to avoid complications and achieve their goal, Pan Yu immediately grabbed Yang Keiwei and hurriedly left the place. However, Yang Keiwei began to experience hallucinations, seeing many butterflies. Pan Yu, seeing her distressed expression, approached and took her hand, saying, Shang Wenzi, are you out of your mind? She replied, I'm not Shang Wenzi, and then impulsively kissed him. Pan Yu was startled and quickly realized that something was wrong with the tea. After giving Yang Keiwei the antidote, Pan Yu, upon seeing her clear up, realized that she seemed to recall kissing him earlier. Sensing her embarrassment, she quickly retreated to a room to compose herself. Feeling ashamed and unsettled by her earlier indiscretion, she noticed someone outside the door monitoring her. Pan Yu heard her cry out and pushed open the door to find the room empty. He quickly rushed out to pursue her. 
Yang Keiwei found herself cornered, with the person demanding she hand over the chips and asking, What did Li Lang tell you? She replied, I don't know Li Lang. The assailant brandished a dagger, intending to kill her. As she dodged the knife, she accidentally fell onto the stage where the wolf fight was taking place. Pan Yu tracked them to the scene and without hesitation jumped down to rescue her. He was scratched on the back by the wolf in the process. Taking out his short sword, he killed the wolf that was pouncing towards him. Then, he swiftly took Yang Keiwei and the assailant away from there. Someone took the knife from the wolf's body and used it to kill the brothel keeper's concubine. People scattered in panic. Zhuilin Jiang came in and saw the commotion. He grabbed someone and asked, What's happening? The person replied, There's been a murder. We need to escape. Pan Yu and Yang Keiwei brought the person into an empty room. Pan Yu recognized him and said, You disguised yourself as a musician and entered my wedding a month ago. Taking advantage of the dim night, wearing bridal attire, you impersonated me and entered the bridal chamber. It was you who killed Yang Keiwei. The person replied, You should thank me. I made your beloved think she was seeing you before she died. Enraged, Pan Yu attempted to kill him but was stopped in time by Yang Keiwei. The person said, Ever since you returned to Hiang, I've been laying low here, trying to avoid trouble. I didn't expect you to still find me. Pan Yu asked him, Who ordered you to kill Yang Keiwei? But he didn't confess. Instead, he immediately took poison and ended his own life. The Life and Death Square mobilized all armed forces to hunt them down. A Jiang realized they were being framed and immediately came to inform them to leave. However, Yang Keiwei insisted on staying behind to dissect the body. Pan Yu, seeing Yang Keiwei examining the body, was reminded of how she used to be, but now she appeared to be Shang Guanji. Yang Keiwei found a ripple token on the deceased and called out, Sir, come and see, this is a token. He asked her, how did you know there was something hidden in his wound? She replied, he cut the wound himself and then stitched it back up. Pan Yu began to hallucinate, seeing the real Yang Keiwei before him. After cleaning the bloodstains from the token, Yang Keiwei saw the water ripple pattern. She remembered her father telling her that this water ripple symbol represented an evil organization. They were highly secretive and had committed numerous atrocities. Her father aimed to uncover their members through various clues and ultimately dismantle the organization. Yang Keiwei thought to herself, why did he hide this token inside his body? Could Shang Wenzi's death and my parents' death be related to this water ripple organization? Pan Yu took the token and asked, what does this water ripple mean? She replied, this organization represented by the token is the true culprit behind Miss Yang's murder. They found themselves surrounded, with countless arrows raining down from the life and death square, leaving them with nowhere to hide. Yang Keiwei was struck in the abdomen by an arrow.